You've probably heard me say it a million times in our live trade room or in, you know, one of the hundreds of videos of me talking about candles or price action, uh, where I'll say something along the lines of, I need to see how this candle closes first. But why? Why does that matter? Why does it matter how the candle closes? Why is that so important that it could make or break a trading decision? Hey there, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. I want to take some time out to cover why this is so important and why it can make or break a trade before it even starts, all based on a few ticks. So first off, there's there's a lot of different kinds of candles, but if we really break them down, you can really subdivide candles into thirds. So when we look at a candle in and of itself, depending on strength, we've got three different types. Now first off, based on the open to the close, and I'll use a green bar just to denote bullishness here. We've got the wick on the top and the wick on the bottom. Now, just a quick crash course, if you're not familiar with how candles work, the bottom, because this is a bullish bar, is the open, right? We've got the close, which is at the top of the candle up here. We have the highest point that the candle, or well, the highest point that price made during that time frame, so the high, and the same here. This is the lowest point that the market made during that period of time. Now these candles will typically be filled in, but that's kind of the idea that we're looking for. This would be considered an upper third type candle. You'll notice that if we were to break this in the middle and put a line through the center there, use a different color, this is closing heavily above. And in fact, if we were to break this into thirds, this is closing above the top third. This would be considered a very good, strong candle more often than not. Now, we'll get into the context later, but the upper third, if a candle is closing up here, chances are we've had a situation that the market has had a lot of time to go back and forth, and after all of that back and forth struggle, they were able to close all the way back up at the top. So that's kind of what I'm talking about here with the upper third. Now, let me break down the other two real quick here. So if we look at, the, with that concept in mind, we've got a middle ground candle. And that type of candle is going to look something along the lines of this. It could be bullish, could be bearish, could even be a doji, meaning that there's no body, just opened and closed at the same price. But either way, the market effectively didn't do much. It was just kind of internally chopping around. If we were to break this kind of candle down, and we move it over here real quick, and we have it look like this, and this. Within this price action, right, if we were to break this down inside of here, we started here, right, so it opened here, and it might have moved its way down during that period and kind of back up and had a really, really strong rally up, but then by the end of the candle, it ended up right back down towards here, right? So, well, a little bit, my drawing wasn't exact, but you get the idea. That's what happened inside of that candle. So with the candle closing in the middle ground where it is here, that's not necessarily telling us a whole lot, but at the same time, depending on where and how this closes, there could be a huge amount of information in this weakness of a middle ground kind of candle. And then the final one is the bottom feeder. Now, the bottom feeder is one that is something that looks absolutely ridiculous. You've got some big old wick on the top, and the candle in and of itself could be bullish, could be bearish, could be a doji, uh, but it's a big bottom feeder in the sense that it tried to make something happen and failed, right? It, it just did not work out. And again, if we figure out how this candle looks from the internal structure here, right? Draw this up inside of this candle, right, inside of all of this movement, it would have gone up, 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 had a really, really strong move, and then done something like this, where all the way at the end, it effectively closed on its lows. So taking the same concept and moving it into the actual markets here and looking at what's going on, we can see a couple things, right? First off, let's just look at the current candle. I've got this backed up a little bit here. Uh, we've got the current candle placed right here, nice and strong. And if we look at where this candle is closing based on what we just talked about, right? We take the whole thing. We can see that the bottom third, the middle, the upper third, this is closing in its upper third. This is a relatively strong kind of bull bar. Context aside, it doesn't matter that it's a bear trend, but just looking at the candle itself, right? This is a relatively strong bull bar that will likely in and of itself create a bit of continuation or follow through. If we look at the previous candle, right? This big hunky junky candle here, we can see that if we break this down in the middle, the upper third, the bottom third, this is closing underneath 
that upper third. Now, it might be a give or take, but it's fairly obvious that this is not a strong candle. This is a candle that tried doing something and really didn't have any follow through. Again, context aside, we're not talking about how it may, might have trapped the previous bar or anything like that. We're just looking at the candle in and of itself. It tried to go lower, it tried to go higher, and it settled in the middle. Now, if we look at the next candle before that one, this guy right here, this one is a bottom feeder, right? It tried to do something, rolled all the way up, and then closed all the way down towards its bottom. If we were to subdivide this candle up, we've got the middle, the bottom third, the upper third, and this closed way, way down there. Now, this is a bull bar, meaning that it closed in its bottom third. A bear bar would have to close in its upper third. It's a bottom feeder. It's weakness. It's demonstrating that it tried to do something and failed. Now, it might have only failed temporarily, but if we look at what took place here, based on this strong bull bar, it closed, went all the way up, went all the way down, and then closed right about there, and that creates that giant wick at the top. So it's no wonder that there was a little bit more follow through there. Sellers were looking for a failure move to continue. Now, again, we're not taking into effect any context or anything else like that. That can be a huge benefit, but just looking at how the candles are closing gives you an idea of what to expect or what the market was expecting. Because again, we look at the markets through more of a psychological lens. As an example, back here, this is an incredibly strong bull bar. And right? if we take the whole thing and we break it down into the thirds, this thing basically closed on its top. So the fact that it went above this candle's high, of course, we're going to anticipate bulls coming in here. And if those bulls failed, then we can use that information. This was a very strong bull bar that probably got a lot of people suckered in. So if it wants to come back to this area, this may be a zone of contextual interest of resistance that the market might want to press back. So let's keep this going forward, right? We've got a really strong bull bar. If we break this down, this is closing kind of in its upper third. It's getting close. It's kind of getting a bit wishy-washy, but it's up there, right? We're still demonstrating some relative strength, continuing the market a bit further up. But notice where it closed, right? And this is why I talk so importantly about why the candle is where it is and where it's closing. Where did it close? Well, we've got a level of psychological interest and the market is not closing above it. Does that mean that this needs to immediately fail and fall completely apart? No, of course not. But this does demonstrate that they're having some difficulty and that may be something we need to take into account. Combining that weakness with the fact that this candle, more than some of the others, is kind of back to the weakness, that could be a little bit of a precursory heads up. Hey, we might want to be a little bit careful here. Let's see what happens next. The bulls are able to close through right now they've gotten through we've gotten a little bit more continuation if we break this candle down we can see that by no means is it a massively strong bar if anything it's closing on its upper third or even kind of in the middle ground we're still seeing that yes the bulls are in control but you know maybe i don't want to be a buyer way up at the top a middle candle usually means that we'll probably get inside pullback it's already showing you that that's what's happening if we look back historically, we also have some potential resistance that's not too far away. And if we use this big wick in confusion in context, maybe they're taking profit ahead of coming into that zone of resistance. These are things that we need to consider. We can take this line and we can move it up for the exact same reason. If we look backward a little bit as well, just keeping in check of those break evens and that type of cycling, here was another really strong bull bar that just got the buyers in. And when the market came back, that's where they all exited. Well, guess where we are again? We're seeing the market reject back off of these areas, and these are things to keep in mind. We have a bear bar that is trying to pressure back, and this is very much a middle ground bar. It's not doing anything. It tried to go up, it tried to go down, and it landed smack in the middle. It's not doing anything here, and chances are, if we look backward in that middle ground, we've got a lot of bullishness. In fact, at all bullishness it's all bull bars all the way up we're probably going to see a little bit of bouncing if it does go underneath this bear bar given that we're seeing some weakness and if they do go down where are they probably going to go well the last time we had some strength in an upper third candle was there so if they're going to dip they're probably going to go down to the lows of there because that's where all the support came in last time we do also have that previous zone of resistance which is now possibly support now, here we have a little bit of a stronger bear bar. 
right? The market may not have gone anywhere, but if we break down the candle in and of itself, this has stepped up to the plate a little bit. We're no longer in weak territory. We're no longer in confusion. It seems like maybe they're trying to gear up a decision. This is where we can take previous context into play. Would a bear look to sell this strong of a bear bar in an uptrend, right? When we don't have structural resistance? Well, that's a great question to ask. And honestly, this is one that I just, I, I don't believe them. I would believe that the bears are going to fail here. And we're probably going to see a bit more residual momentum to the upside from the bulls. They have so much strength that I don't have a reason to believe these bears. They have a strong bear bar though. So realistically, it would make a lot of sense to see the bears trigger in. If I wanted to be kind of a, a, an under the radar bull who was looking to get some other traders trapped on the wrong side, perhaps, what better spot to place an entry point for a possible quick bounce back to the upside? We have a quick snap down and another really strong bear decisive candle. Now here, if the bulls were trying to get that snap back to the upside, we're back down to the lows and the market closed under that very decisive candle. If the bulls were trying to buy into this and they were thinking that it was going to get a bounce back up, it better bounce soon. Otherwise, we've got some problems. We've got another really strong stacked bear bar making a statement. It's buried itself down in previous support, so there's still a chance that it bounces back, but you can see an immediate shift in context here. We're also not only closing below the previous candles lows, but also underneath the previous break even points. So all of the longs who bought here trying to get the continuation up and they failed, they've been given a chance to get out of break even and it's starting to look like they might have taken it. This becomes a very heavy spot of potential resistance now because these break even longs are going to start looking to liquidate. We get an inside bull bar back up, and this is what I would call a twin reversal. There's actually a video that goes over this where it dives down and immediately fails back up. Now, this is why you'll hear me also say that one close isn't always necessarily enough, but with a strong bear bar, you would expect them to continue, and they didn't even trigger underneath it. Here's the thing, though, right? With this bullish rally, we weren't necessarily expecting the buyers to, uh, well, we were expecting the buyers to get going up, and they got kind of dunked that could give us a little bit of a clue that maybe the sellers are a little bit, uh, you know, in control and the buyers are a bit underwater. But with this strong of a bull bar, do I really want to take that chance? If the buyers did get in long here on this dip, if they were buying underneath the bear bar or buying down here, this bear bar might have made them nervous, but now we've got an immediate bull bar response right back up again. So here we are again, right? It's got to stay above this area. And this would be another one of those situations where if it's pulling back, I've got to see where it closes. It goes all the way back up and closes back underneath. We have a huge bear engulfing candle now. Now with the bear engulfing candle, this is telling us that if the bulls were trying to get going, if the buyers were looking to get above this strong bull bar to get the break above the highs, we now have a bear engulfing candle that is possibly shutting that entire move down and that nervousness that we were kind of worried about is starting to become a bit more of a truth. Now, chances are because the market closed so aggressively underneath this level and the bulls had their chance to take it higher, we can do a quick check, right? If we go all the way down to the bottom, have they been satisfied on their max greed targets? Meaning, have they gone all the way back up and completed that max greed from the risk that they had to take on? No. Let's go backward a little bit further. Were they satisfied in the scalp over here? Well, the answer to that has to be yes. If we drag this target forward, are we seeing any responsiveness suggesting that the bulls who may have gotten dunked here are taking their targets on this? Yes. Now we've got a bear bar that is really confirming that zone of resistance. We just trapped bulls in above an incredibly strong bull bar and now have an even stronger bear bar that is down in its bottom third. In this case, it is a bear bar. Uh, this would be considered an upper third, bottom third type candle where it's way down at the lows, closing very aggressively. Chances are if the longs did get long here and they thought they could get away with it, they're going to be rethinking that decision now, and this just steps up to the plate as a heavy zone of resistance. We haven't had any candle confirmation, though. Let's keep this going a little bit further. 
Okay, now we have candle confirmation in a perfect location. This is exactly what you want to see in terms of confirmation. Not only did we get the trap above the highs, not only did we get the retest of the scalpers targets, not only did we get the bear engulfing candle after a really strong bull bar trapped in the longs, but we are also demonstrating a bottom feeder candle rejecting off of the break even point. This is everything the sellers need. Now, given the context that we have, sellers will be looking for a continuation phase underneath this to drive this back down again, right? This is stacking all of the odds in the right place, looking for the right locations, etc. The stop is obviously would be above this bear candles high. The entry point would be underneath for the trigger. And that means that the downside target at the earliest would be hovering right around there at 46.25. Now, there will be extended targets below that, but that is stacking all of them together to create a scenario where we've got to drive down. And lo and behold, to the tick, we have a rejection there. Not anywhere else, but there specifically. Now, there's a reason for that, because algos are predictable. But they're only predictable when you understand how they work. So that's going to do it for this one. I hope it helps you understand why I talk about the close of a candle so much and why I put so much emphasis and weight on them. If you want to see us trade these crazy markets in real time, you can sign up for a week-long trial to our VIP live trade room. You can do that right on the main page of SSFTG. Right on top of the main page, you can click the trial registration. And by clicking there, you'll also receive our 24-page guide on risk reward. And if you have more questions, you also have the ability to sign up for a free 30-minute call with me uh, so we can take care of all of those questions for you. I hope you had an amazing day so far. And if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you all. And of course, you can also register for a trial, get on a phone call. You can send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Tons of different ways to get a hold of me, but make sure to get a hold of us so we can help you out. I love hearing from you all, like I said. Until the next one, though, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you all later.